EMP Series Revolution, Chapter 5. There was a small crowd gathered in the church auditorium this particular Sunday morning. The current situation in the region kept most citizens cautiously staying close to home. Most people were still recovering from the chaos and unrest that the societal collapse caused by the EMP attack had brought. Most of the visitors today consisted of area citizens, mostly farmers and homesteaders, many of whom were members and family. Pastor Sharps was preaching a message straight from the Word of God, the Holy Bible. He always preached and taught straight from the Bible. He said many times, if a preacher is saying anything from the pulpit that doesn't line up with the Word of God, head for the door. He takes his responsibility to rightly divide God's Word very seriously. He was finishing up his message when the front door slowly and quietly opened. Brothers and sisters, before I conclude today's message with a summary, I will read our text verse again. He read the text from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. As he read through verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. He explained to the congregation that God's word shows us that there is indeed a time for every purpose under heaven. We are told in God's word that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. There was a time when the God of the Bible was indeed the Lord of this nation, and bless us, he did. In the 1770s, a group of farmers and colonists went to war with and defeated the largest superpower of the time, the British Army and Navy. I submit that without the blessings of our God, this nation's victory over that superpower would not have been possible. Today, as this nation turns its back on God, we continue to ride the waves of those early blessings. Brothers and sisters, those waves are about to come crashing down upon our shores. I submit that God has already begun his judgment upon us. Just as he destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah for their immorality, He has begun his wrath upon this nation. Look at the level of immorality in this country. The things that we not only tolerate, but accept, and finally are forced to celebrate even. Look at the education system and the direction that that has taken since God was taken out of it. Look at the result of educating generations of Americans without the influence of God's word. The good news is that it is not too late. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, we see that God promises to heal our land. The scripture reads, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now while it's true this was written to the nation of Israel, there is a practical application for the United States today. But before he will heal this land, he requires us to do our part in that. He requires us, you and me, Christian, those of us who are called by his name, to humble ourselves and to pray 
He requires us to seek him out and to repent of our sins, to turn away from our wicked ways, to turn away from the very things that brought us as a nation to where we are today. Then and only then does he promise to hear us from heaven and to heal our land. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is a promise from God but it is a conditional promise. He requires us to first do our part. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. Lord, we know that the revival of which you speak in today's scripture must start with us individually in our hearts. Lord, we pray that you give us the strength to do what is required of us. We ask that you continue to bless and to heal this land, this nation. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness of the evil and wickedness that we as a nation have embraced. Lord, I pray for the leaders in our government to have the wisdom and discernment to do what is right in these difficult times. Father God, we thank you for all you do in our lives, for the blessings that you give each one of us individually every day and for the blessings you give us all collectively in allowing us to continue to freely worship, honor, and glorify you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, and the congregation said in unison, Amen. Then Pastor Sharp stepped away from his pulpit And he stood to the side. Friends, I would like to take this time to address the congregation. I am stepping away from the pulpit because what I am about to say comes from me. It is not from biblical text. You all know what has been going on lately. You all know my personal position in this matter. The stark realization that the Lord has purposed a time for war, as well as a time for peace, is sobering, brethren. I believe that the time for peace may rapidly be coming to an end, and that the inevitable time for war may soon be upon us in this nation. Soon, each one of us must decide to stand and fight, or to step aside and make way for those who will. Search your hearts and pray about where you wish to be in this matter. I submit that the time for good men and women, men and women who have love and worship for the Lord, to stand together and to fight, is here. The transitional provisional government is doubling down on the order for martial law. They are lengthening the curfews and deepening the restrictions on travel and other aspects of the scope of the control that they are asserting in this region. Many of you feel, as I do, that these restrictions are illegitimately based and therefore illegal and unconstitutional. I just received a letter today formally notifying this church and myself that our 501c status has been revoked. The congregation started to murmur and protest. Settle down, please. Allow me to continue, Pastor Sharps pleaded. They are also requiring me to submit the text content for any sermon message I intend to preach from this point forward. I have no intention of complying with this directive, as I feel it violates my right not only to free speech, but my right to worship as I choose. I'm already in violation of this directive, as I have preached today without obtaining approval for the message. It is my position and my very firm belief that to preach the Word of God honestly and completely is not only my right, but my duty and my responsibility as well. The 5013C status revocation is unfortunate. 
and unconstitutional. It is, however, just a bump in this road that we travel now. It impacts our sovereignty as a church through the financial burden of taking away our tax-exempt status. In the society and the economy that we now find ourselves in, this will have little impact on us. Even in the best of economic times, we would not let this status revocation daunt us. We do what we do for the worship of God, for the growth of his kingdom, not for the growth of riches or monetary gain, but for growth of his eternal kingdom. The mission and purpose of this church has always been to bring people to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, to fulfill our commandment to go forth and preach the gospel to the entire world, to see souls saved and on their way to heaven. That continues to be the primary mission and purpose of this church. The church is not this building or these grounds. The church is us. Each one of us represents a part of the New Testament church. No government or military agency can change that or take it away from us. I will continue to be here behind this pulpit every Sunday morning and evening, as well as every Wednesday evening, preaching the word of God as I have done for the past 27 years. I will be here doing my duty to God and fulfilling my pastoral responsibilities until they come crashing in through that door to physically remove me. As he motioned to the front door, he saw Carl and Zeb Fairley standing in the lobby, listening to all he was saying. Carl yelled out, Amen, preacher! Then, in an even louder voice, he shouted, Preach! The crowd cheered. Pastor then motioned for Carl to come forward. Carl walked up to the front of the auditorium and stood beside Pastor Sharps, who was standing down off of the platform. Pastor put his arm around Carl and he told the crowd, I think it's safe to say that most, if not all of you, are already convinced that Carl is not guilty of what he's accused of. Many of you also know his deputy, Frank, whose wife and daughter are here with us today. He pointed to Sharon and her daughter in the congregation. Frank is being held by the military without due process, which is his constitutionally guaranteed right. I want you all to know that I personally support and trust Carl with regards to his plan and course of action in freeing Frank. I would ask all of you to search your heart and your conscience to do what you think is the right thing. Carl is going to need a support network in the days ahead. Once any of you commits to aid Carl in his efforts, you will become enemies of the state and of the government. I am committing personally to work and to fight if necessary with this just man. I urge all of you to seriously consider doing so as well. I would like to read a quote by a prominent Protestant pastor named Martin Niemöller. First, they came for the socialists. And I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Then Pastor Sharp said, Brethren, we must stick together in this difficult time. We must create unity. We either stand together or we fall individually. Again, the congregation cheered. 
as Pastor Sharps and Carl Fairley looked out over the crowd. Carl recognized many of the men who had already committed their loyalty to the cause. It was clear to Carl that the others were with him now as well.